Hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Owen. It is a Friday night, guys, and we are coming at you here on Glasgow Rangers Nation, where you get your team every day, Daily Rangers news. And the way you get that Daily Rangers news, Daily Rangers content is by hitting that sub, ringing that notification bell, setting it to all so that you get all of the updates from the greatest club, the most successful team in football, Glasgow Rangers. So Michael Beale has been speaking to the media today ahead of Sunday's trip to Pataudry to play Aberdeen in what is Aberdeen's World Cup final. At least that's what you would think, looking at obviously what they've been doing and the way they play, uh, the way that they play it like a Champions League final whenever they play us. It's a shame they can't do the same when they play Celtic and they don't and they just lie down and die in those games. Um, anyway, Michael Beale obviously was asked about numerous different topics, uh, numerous different subjects. And, here, and I, I want to bring you some of the key points from that press conference. Obviously, one of the first talking points at the press conference was to do with that at a cryptic Instagram post from Rome. Obviously, you know, Michael Beale did obviously put that post out the other day. Here's a reminder of that post. Uh, first visit to Rome last weekend, amazing history and buildings. Like I said, it was last weekend. It wasn't, you know, the same night as obviously the Roma Feyenoord Europa League game, which took place last night. Um, Roma, unfortunately, coming out on top in that game. Um, he said that he was there. He was working for the club in Italy. So it's clear that it was on Rangers business. He was there not just to have a holiday or for any other strange reasons. As some of you had some fantastic comments at the bottom of the video uh, as to what he could be doing there, uh, especially with the Vatican visits. I thought were, were, were rather comical. Um, <clears throat> but, uh you know, he was there to meet with players, meet with players' agents, meet with clubs, uh, meet with representatives of clubs and players to talk about, obviously, prospective signings for Rangers. That's why he was there. He was watching games. Uh, Beale spoke, obviously, about, you know, the fact that he's obviously taken over very much that kind of role that Ross Wilson was doing in terms of going out there, meeting people, talking to, talking to people, negotiating deals, contracts, uh, transfer fees, et cetera, et cetera. Beale had this to say, and um, this is what was tweeted out by the club. He said, we are in an with stats everywhere, but I want to sit with a player and see if they want to play for Rangers. You also want to clearly chat through their roles and what they can expect at the club. Relationships in football is massive, and I think this is a this is a big thing. This is a big difference between Beal and a number of managers nowadays. Is the fact that Beal wants to do that thing that I think the old school managers used to do: sit down, look the new signing in the eye, see if he's got that hunger, that fight, that desire to want to play for the club, you know, and be very clear and very specific with with the player before he comes to the club. You know exactly what is expected of him, exactly what is expected of a Rangers player, and exactly what he will do, and you know, have and, and also begin to be, build, as he said, that relationship with that player is very very key so for me you know fantastic for Michael Beale and, and again it obviously opens up the question marks as who was he there watching um I don't think it was necessarily just uh, Rome teams you know he said he was in Italy working he was watching games plural so you know he could have been watching a number of different games obviously you know there's a number of Italian teams uh some very good teams some very talented teams to Milan's Napoli Bologna you know there's lots of players obviously that he could have been watching but, you know, good that he's out there, good that he's starting to scout and already starting to build the team ready for next season. You know, he spoke very much about wanting to have those players in place, didn't he? He said, obviously, that, you know, the intention was to have, the, ha, uh, you know, to have the deals done early and get in a strong pre-season. He says that, we're, that he was, in his words, comfy where we are at this moment in time with player acquisition. So, you know, very positive news there coming out from the manager in terms of this revamp, this rebuild, this summer that's going to have to take place. Um, you know, bringing in four to five new faces for the first, even possible other squad players in and around those four to five players. Um but some unfortunate news, some bad news in this press conference as regards injuries and regards this man, Ryan Jack. Now, obviously, there's a lot of discussion around Ryan Jack, who is out of contract at the end of this season, um, as to what his future is with the club and as to what the club intend to do with him. Many people obviously want him retained, want his services retained, want him to be given a new contract. But... Uh, others state that they shouldn't. He should not be given a new contract due to the fact that he is constantly, in their words, injured. Unfortunately, B uh, Jack hasn't done himself any favours with those people by uh, when Beal announced today that uh, Jack would be missing three to four weeks of the season. Therefore, meaning he will miss the Pitodri game and he will miss the semi-final against Celtic. Uh, therefore, meaning we're likely to have John Lundstrom in midfield against Celtic uh, without Ryan Jack being there. So, obviously, bad news for, for Rangers, bad news for Ryan Jack, and. Obviously, this has got a, 
I don't know, cast a doubt over whether Jack, Jack is someone that Rangers want to keep next season, you know, given the fact that again, he's out injured again, he is missing key games. You know, I know that there's the rule about the number of Scottish players to have in the squad that may save him, at, you know, and that may keep him in the squad, but for next season, and they may offer him a year deal on some sort of, I don't know, pay as you play or some sort of incentive based contract, um, relying on perhaps him retiring from international football. I don't know, but it does seem that this injury is again something that's going to go against Ryan Jack when it comes to renegotiating a new contract. He talked about the fact that uh, Scott Wright is back in the squad and back in training. Uh, he said that Alex Lowry will be back in training tomorrow, which is good news that the young man will be back and obviously therefore you know, perhaps eligible for some game time after the Old Firm semi-final next Sunday. I think we could see some of those young players involved in the league, obviously depending on what goes on in that semi-final. Um, he said that Goldson and Kent will make it for next weekend. This weekend, obviously, coming too soon for them. Um, obviously, Goldson is, is is someone that we need back. He's, he has been a massive miss. I think, you know, we've talked very much about the fact that uh, defensive frailties and defensive mistakes have cost us goals in, in the old firm game. There's two rickets from Davis and Suter. And then again, on... Uh, on Saturday against St Mirren, again, two huge errors, again, causing two goals. Unfortunately, it wasn't too painful against St Mirren. But uh, Goldson is the organiser back there, the leader back there. He really is the main man back there. So for me, it's good that obviously he will be back for the old firm game. We need him back there. Who will play alongside him? Who knows? I, my personal opinion, I'd play Suter alongside him. I think he's a better centre half than Davis, takes less nonsense than Davis does. So that's what, that's what I would go with in the semi-final. Uh, Ryan Kent will be back. Obviously, mixed feelings about that, given the fact that in the last old firm game, Ryan was absolutely shocking, went missing in action um, and hasn't been great this season. We had that one good performance against Hibs, Easter Road. But other than that, he has been poor this season. And the fact that he's out of contract and there's obviously strong rumours linking him to Burnley has a lot of Rangers fans saying that perhaps he shouldn't be involved in the semi-final or involved again this season for Rangers. Um, I can't help but think, though, that Beal will play him in that semi-final um, uh, for definite. He talked about Cholak. Cholak is touch and go for the next couple of weeks. So it looks like we will obviously have Alfie leading the line in the next couple of games against Aberdeen and against Celtic. Um, you now, moving on to Aberdeen, he talked very much about <clears throat> the fact that Aberdeen are playing some good football. They are fighting for that third place in the league and they're in quite good form at this moment in time. And he'll say that we, we will play a good team. And he said that Rangers will play their strongest team. Bill also had this to say. He says, we have in general momentum over the last number of games. We've played well, scored goals, and I want to continue with that at the moment. Our away form has been really strong. I'm looking forward to the trip and I think it will be a good game. So that is certainly something that's very true. The away form has been good. We have won, you know, at Tynecastle, at Easter Road, at Fir Park. You know, we've been places and won and we gave a great account of ourselves in that old firm game. Again, we you know, probably should have won, but for giving up those two stupid goals, uh, <clears throat> you know, with the Davis error and obviously the Suter error, um, so compounded by the fact that Alan McGregor cannot run anymore. Um, but, uh, you know, he was obviously saying about, you know, the fact that Aberdeen will be a tough game and that they will give everything. They'll try hard. They'll put, you know, they'll put their bodies on the line. They will really step up their game and play it like it's a Champions League final, as they always tend to when Rangers come to town. Um, you know, given the fact that they always obviously consider us their cup final um, and are a team that uh, I think single Rangers out for special treatment above all in the SPL, shall we say. Um, Beal also talked about the fact he was also asked about referees and the VAR system. And I think the thing we've always seen, the, the remarks that Michael Beal made there, he, we've got a caveat because you know managers, head coaches have got to be careful with what they say. You know any remarks you know against officials or or against um, you know the VAR officials can either lead to obviously fines, um, you know, from, from the SFA, you know, you can get yourselves in trouble with the governing body. And that's certainly something that Beale doesn't want to do. And also the fact that, you know, it can whip up perceived hatred against officials amongst fan bases. Hence, you know, that was the hatred that uh, that uh, Kevin Clancy had after the Celtic game. And look, you know, no matter what you thought of that performance, and yes, it was absolutely awful. And, it, and Kevin Clancy is not, not a fit referee. Um, to referee big games, but you know any sort of threats against an individual just over a football game is ridiculous and out of order. And anyone who made threats at, against Kevin Clancy and his family are out of order, and they shouldn't be doing it. And they should be obviously dealt with by the police. Um, 
You know, he said he said in general he was pleased with referees and had a, and he was pleased with how there was an open dialogue in his words between the club and referees and the SFA. Um, he also said that uh, VAR had cleared up a lot of heavy tackles and a lot of off the ball stuff this year, and he was pleased with VAR and how it had been used this year. But like I said, any remarks there, you know, we may have views to the contrary on refs on VAR this year, but. Like I said, any remarks that Beale makes have to be caveated by the fact that he is a manager. He is speaking to the media. He has to be careful what he says. He doesn't want to face a fine or a touchline ban. Um, and, you know, that is something he always has to bear in mind. So they're the key points, obviously, that came out of Michael Beale's press conference today. Obviously, the top headline there is that Ryan Jack will be missing for three to four weeks. Um, no mention of Ridvan in, in, the, in the press conference that I heard. Um, I will go back and listen to it again just to check it out, uh, bring you any updates if there is any. I missed uh, listening to the press conference this afternoon. Anyway, thank you guys for choosing to watch Glasgow Rangers Nation. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of our, what our manager has had to say today. And obviously, let me know what you think of Ryan Jack. Is it time that Jack was moved on? Is this the straw that broke the camel's back with Ryan? Thank you so much for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. I will be back to speak to you again on the channel very soon here on Glasgow Rangers Nation. Thanks for watching.